But giant swords actually good for something? No, they're not. I'm like 95% sure they are not good for anything. The only really, really big swords in history were swords that were found to be used for like uh, different ceremonies and stuff like that. People didn't actually use them. So why hander? Well, I, I think that like, so a why hander is like typically like five to eight pounds, right? Maybe five to 10 pounds. Like we're talking about like the Dragon Slayer Greatsword. I mean, this thing's like 250 pounds. Like, I mean, you think about like, that's a huge fucking difference. Like you can swing something around that's five or 10 pounds, right? Like it's heavy, but like, imagine you do it all the time. Y you could do that. Yeah, that's fine. But like, imagine swinging something around that's like 30 or 40 pounds all the time, 50 pounds all the time. No way. And here's another reason why big swords weren't popular back then. It's the fact that being able to even own a sword was a status symbol because a lot of people didn't have access to that much metal. So it's like if you had a massive sword that was that size, you'd have to be really rich. Yeah, you weren't allowed. Yeah, exactly. Metal's really expensive. So yeah, there's a lot of reasons why people didn't use big swords. Spears won wards. Spears are the they're they're better than swords. They are. Spears are too OP. Yeah. Giant swords are not too slow and not too heavy to be deadly. They are practical. What a fucking joke, dude. This guy's probably... Uh, and look at the weapon, right? It's the Guts Greatsword. And uh, let's be honest here. It's probably made out of styrofoam. Okay. Let me think of an eloquent, persuasive response. No. No. There, no. It's good. All right, so with a little more seriousness, are giant swords practical in real life? Well, mm -hmm. let's do a bit of a visual experiment. Yes. I figured a prop would be neat for this video, so I thought I'll just grab some scrap lumber I have lying around and quickly cut out a basic shape. Three days of filling the garage with sawdust later. Oh, geez, bro. Like, I made one of these with my dad whenever I was a kid, like, out of wood. And, like, it was a fraction of this size, and it took fucking forever. We've got this. Yeah. Well, Ooh. this was the only grip tape I had left. Ooh. But after staring Wicked. at it for several Ooh. hours during editing, I now realize mistakes have been uh -huh. made. All right, so what do you think is more dangerous and harder to evade? This? Yep. Or that. This. Or that. Yep. This. And isn't it crazy how fucking obvious this is? Like, I mean, I just, I, I can't believe, like, I would love to see the dude who's explaining why you can use a big sword like that. Let's be or stronger. That. Well, also, you have to keep in mind the other reason why spears are really good is actually, it's like a human brain hack. So, uh, there's actually a really good video that shows this. There's a taught how to throw a flawed, they, they're taught how to throw a flawed punch. Right. It's like this, it's like, you know. Rip Kimbo? Like when I was catching up to Bro, you. Bro, like Cody's before. in chat. Me and Cody used to watch Kimbo slice fucking street fights back in like 2006. We were watching this guy right from the beginning. Everyone did? Yeah. You're going, oh, how's that happening? Yeah. It's like this, like, what's your fastest hand? Watch this, watch, watch. i my left hook. Okay, yeah, well, hey, put your left hand up. Like, just go like this, right? Now I'm going to throw three, three jabs. Right. Don't let me hit them. Don't let me hit your hand. So what you want me to do? Move them just way. move it out the way. All right. So, yeah. now notice the speed of the first two. Mm -hmm. Right? Ready? Yeah. That's one, two. Okay, now here's the third one. Don't let me hit it. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <the hell. laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> That's just what it is. There it is. It right? Yeah. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> Hold on. Hand hand okay. Don't let me hit it. Right? Right. Don't let me hit it. <laughs> now you got to ask yourself, okay, in the first two I threw faster. Mm -hmm. the, those I'm throwing half, not even half as fast. <laughs> it's just the way I'm throwing it. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. You see, and, and so it's because I'm not throwing from the shoulder. Right, right, right. Now if I use speed, now hold your hand up. Don't let me hit it. I'm going to get back here. So one of the reasons why this shit happens is it's harder to look at something that gets slightly larger, like a spear coming directly at you, versus a sword coming at you like this. 
because there's more of like a fucking telegraph of what it's going to be. So that's another reason why spears are just straight up fucking better. So like it's it's not just the fact that they're faster. It's the fact that spears also have like a natural advantage against the human eye. Can simply be And the dropping. distance, well no, what I'm saying is like everybody knows about the distance. Everybody knows that they're easier or cheaper to make. But a lot of people might not make the connection with the telegraphing. And that's why I showed this video. A large, heavy, sharpened metal bar on a target do some damage? Mm -hmm. Sure. Is it easy to hit a moving target that doesn't want this to be dropped on them? Mm. It's pretty hard. Sorry about the lame background. The garage is just where I have the most space. So no. I exaggerated how sluggish this is for comedic effect. It is just made of wood. Yeah, it's so probably like, what, 15 pounds, something like that? The problem is less the weight. It's more how much is pulling on you if i hold it I, where it's balanced it's not so bad no right? but you can see the balance is fairly far out but if i now hold it like this the more yeah. i lower it the harder it gets so it wouldn't be so much of a problem And like this is hard to do for like anybody like i watched a video of eddie hall swinging a sword around like this eddie hall's like a fucking really really well-known strong man like fucking one world's strongest man, and if he didn't win, he got like second place or something like that. Even he struggled doing it, right? You could simply that dude's fucking drop massive. It. All right, just let it smash into the ground, because then you don't even have to stop it, so you don't have to mm -hmm. exert yourself in trying to decelerate this behemoth. Yeah. But then what? <laughs> then you know they do the video game thing of either rolling or just sidestepping or just stepping back to yeah. evade it and then during the time yeah, you it have takes to pick you it to up. hoist this thing back up and attack again they can mow you down well so this is another thing like growing up my dad taught me a lot of this stuff like especially in terms of like uh like swinging shit around right and like moving stuff around and, like, one of the main things that's, like, really hard to do and, like, that you have to get better at is, like, recovering from a swing, if that makes sense, right? So, like, if you're cutting, uh, like, a piece of wood with an axe, you're hitting something with a sledgehammer or something like that, a lot of the real work happens not even in the swing, but in the recovery to the next swing. So, funnily enough, the old Dark Souls roll-to-win tactic actually makes practical sense yeah, against does, an enemy with far-reaching attacks that can't be blocked mm -hmm. and that have a lot of recovery time in between. Yep. Although there are plenty of moments where it only works because of invincibility frames. And stepping is a safer, more down-to-earth alternative. Oh, got but against a giant weapon, maybe sometimes you would just have to fling yourself a little farther. Well, you now, can see also, like, that's the way you're supposed giant to do weapon. it. weapon, maybe sometimes you would because just Because you see he's, like, I mean, this is a very bad example because it's literally a video game NPC. But you can see how obviously like he's controlling the momentum of the sword going around rather than the sword just going up and down equally as fast. Have to fling yourself. A it's a good farther. anime. It's actually a very now, good. Now, the anime. sword is not quite that stupidly heavy, yeah. because maybe it's it's a composite blade, so the core is made of something lighter than mm -hmm. steel, and then the edges are made of steel, or if the whole thing is made of some super strong lightweight fantasy alloy. And it's heavy, but it's not well, impossibly yeah. so. Or you have super strength, whatever. There are more things you can do. For example, if you swing... Well, it's like also another factor is that I know some people were going to bring up Berserk and explain why, like, this is like... Maybe it makes Berserk look worse. But actually, in the reality, is that one of the biggest criticisms of the 2016 Berserk anime was the fact that Guts was swinging around the, the Dragon Slayer Greatsword like it was nothing. Because, like, in the actual uh, manga, like, whenever he swings that sword, that's like fucking walking up there and just putting your dick on the table, right? It's not something you just do and then you do it again. It's something you do and it has a fucking effect. Yeah, he winds it up. Yeah, exactly. And they dodge and then they come in. And also he has armor that helps him do that, too. Like, he... He's literally using that with the armor most of the time, right? You can swing right back up, you know, particularly with a double-edged mm -hmm. sword. You know, you can cut with the other side and just yeah, go... it's magical <laughs> armor, yeah. Now, it still is going to be fairly sluggish 
compared to a regular sword because you have to decelerate it, stop it, and then accelerate exactly. it again. Yep. So it would be better to keep it moving yep. See, that's exactly, and bring yep. it around for another swing yeah. instead of just letting it crash to the ground. And that's what you do with a real historical great sword. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's the one that I have. And you see, obviously, like, how he keeps controlling the sword going in a different direction. That's why a lot of times whenever, um, like, the, somebody goes and they use, like, an axe. Like, the way you use the axe, right, is you have, like, the, this is the fucking axe. Um, is, like, the axe goes down, and it does the cut, and then it goes this way, and then you pull it back up, right? Like, that's, that's, that's the way you're supposed to do it. Because in pulling it back you create the momentum to pull it back up and make it, uh, make it weigh less. Mm -hmm. That's the same with anything. And you can watch, if you watch a lot of times, like there's like older movies, like new, newer movies don't really focus on this as much because I just don't think it's like part of like culture anymore. But like back in the day, you ever watch like a uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou? Or like a lot of other movies that are like chain gangs, you know, it's like a chain gang on like the side of a road, making a road or something like that. You can see them like using like the sledgehammers in this exact same way. Can this stop a bullet? Of course it can, but only in anime. And again, like, if you look at this weapon right here, think about how much smaller this weapon is in terms of size versus a, uh, you know, like, the, the gut sword that he was making before. Like, it's literally probably three or four times larger. And also, the, uh, the hilt weighs a lot, too. Like, that's not, like, a small, uh, a small handle. Yep. Oh, Jesus. And also, you keep in mind, like, this is also, this is what looks cool. You know what I mean? Like, if you see somebody dancing around like that in a circle, and, like, this is in a Roman Colosseum, bro, that guy's not coming out. That guy's done. It's completely impractical, yeah. Not, not too good. If I'm in what you would call tail guard in historical martial arts, Ooh. it's such a big sword, I can simply rest it on the ground, and then when I'm ready to attack, right. I swing it up like this. It's much more awkward on the other side because of crossed hands. Sure. But one thing I could do is pinch the flat of the blade like this and hold it here. Yeah. All like right, some claymores have that. And now I can still swing it. The funny thing mm -hmm. is, I can even do it with one hand as long as I then use the other hand when... They I even have that it. in WoW, where, where like, there's like stuff actually on the blade. That sword from... Um, uh, there's a rare spawn in RFD Classic WoW uh, that drops a sword called Excalibur, and you can see that like part of the blade is also wrapped as well uh, for this exact reason. Uh, it's to like kind of increase like your fulcrum uh, strength. Because when swinging it, I'm powering it with the core, yep. not just with my arms. So. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the montante Obviously, technique yeah. of kickstarting the sword works here too. Yeah, you that's just good. have to kick a little bit harder than you would a more normal yeah, size sword. Yeah, and that's sword. again creating the momentum. So why do smaller historical great swords work? while well, this size, at least if it's made of all steel, doesn't. Because it's too big, right? I mean, like, fuck. That's obviously why. Yeah, what do you mean? Simply because you are able to keep moving the great yeah. sword and keep using the momentum, which is a lot harder with something like this. I mean, you might be able to with enough strength. Right? It's just going to be more slow. What I'm saying is it requires an inhuman level of strength. 
Like, even literal strongmen can't swing a sword around this big in the same way that people can in anime. It's, it's literally impossible. So the like reason a gorilla, a gorilla could is do it. the reach. Yeah. You know, if I perform a falsetto cut like this and immediately come back around, you may just not have enough time. You evade the first falsetto cut, but then I step mm -hmm. back and come around and cut again. Yeah. Right. So you may not have enough time to rush in while that's happening. If I screw up and smash the sword into the ground. Well, you just imagine, imagine you're fighting this dude and you have a spear. Well, there it is, right? Yeah, that, that's just about it. Yeah, it's that simple. Here they come. I might still be able to pull it up to at least defend myself. It won't matter. Right? Or perhaps I can raise it up to just present the point and make them think twice about rushing in. So it's not completely ridiculous as long as- Somebody says, uh, I don't know about that time frame though. How big were humans back then? Weren't Vikings fucking massive? Not to mention what age they started training, etc. Just food for thought. I cannot even express how wrong you are. Back in the day, uh, people didn't have the same, like, if you look at a, a like, look at, uh, you know, Thor, right? The, uh, the guy from everybody, the mountain, right? Look at him. Like, look at, uh, Brian Shaw. Look at Eddie Hall. Look at Arnold Schwarzenegger. Look at Ronnie Coleman. These guys did not exist back in the fucking Viking days. Like, they just didn't exist. They weren't that big. They weren't that strong. Because you think about, like, a lot of the reasons why these guys get so big and they're so strong is because of a lot of technology. And not just, like, like oh, like, fucking implants into your arms or something like that. But I mean, like, uh, science and technology. Where they're able to take more, uh, take more, uh, eat more food, eat the right kind of food, have the food portioned out in the right way, have the food be a certain type of food. I don't, I don't really know exactly all the details, right? There's like all the protein stuff that they eat as well. Uh, it's very, very complicated. Steroids? Well, yeah, there's also steroids too. But I'm saying like even beyond that, just like the access to nutrition nowadays provides such an insurmountable advantage versus what people had back in the Viking days. And even kings didn't have access to the same levels of nutrition that we did because they didn't even know what it was. Like, they, they didn't even know, like, what the fuck is a calorie? They have no idea what that is. What is a carbohydrate? They don't even know. True ignorance on my part. I got your point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant was like, there were big guys, right? Like Goliath, David and Goliath. But, like, what I'm saying is that <sighs> there's also, like, th there are even bigger guys now. Uh, like, humankind and people have gotten bigger over time. Like, there are stories and, like, uh, you know, like, legends like giants and stuff like that but none of that has ever been like completely scientifically proven so yeah goliath was six foot i bet he's probably seven feet tall right assuming that it happened i mean but like being seven feet tall half of the guys in the nba are over seven feet tall so think about that what food did they not have um jesus i I mean, I'm not even sure that I can answer. Yeah, abundance, like not half. Yeah, muscle milk, the creatine, the powder, whey, steak, sugar. Yeah, like I, I don't know. But what I'm saying is that the technology and the science behind like kind of nutrition is a massive driving factor in why people are like stronger and bigger now. It's a huge reason. And like also if you go and uh, what's this here? You're wrong, huh? Wait, am I? I don't think that I am at all. Google says we're smaller than our ancestors. I mean, this this sure, I mean, like, this is the first one that I found here, right? I mean, early humans were five feet tall. Uh, based on archaeologists being able to glean from historical research, but it's five, five inches. Females were five foot one. Global height by birth. This is 1985, right? And so 1980s, and let's see if I can find uh, 1896. Uh, this is still kind of gone, uh, gone up, and we, we, it's it's hard to find something that like goes all the way back to like Viking times, right? So it's like hard for me to find that. Yeah, I, I don't know why it's so hard to imagine that, because of course the Vikings were considered very big, 
Because like if somebody somebody six feet tall at that time was pretty big, especially somebody like six three or something like that. The average Viking would be considered a manlet nowadays. Yeah, it's just common sense. Anyway, I, I went off on a total tangent about this. But my point is that with a lot of this kind of stuff, yes, obviously people never use this stuff because they were even smaller now than they are uh, smaller then than they are now. As long as the thing is not too heavy for you to handle. Yeah. You know, as long as you have the strength, be it natural mm -hmm. or magically enhanced, you can actually pull it off. I'll say that. But generally, as far mm -hmm. as real world application goes, obviously we don't fight with swords anymore outside yeah. of sports and recreation. But if there was an application, then you could maybe make this work with enough specialized training. I don't really see the point because a conventional sword is more efficient yeah it's always going to be better takes less time to learn yeah exactly but aside from that the one thing it's I cool do to see people swinging around big swords but like realistically these were never really used like this is i think the biggest sword that was like functionally used as far as i know like i know that there were a few very large like katana like blades i forgot the name of it is it does it start with a y um but like really bigger ones than that just it Odachi? Yeah, yeah, something like that. I was thinking of something else. Useful with this is an exercise tool. A fun exercise tool. Yeah. Because, you know, if you just keep swinging this around, you know, say this you just, just do cavalry. a bunch of cuts, mm -hmm. the nice thing is that this is basically a full body workout. Yeah, it is. Because you can't it's just hard. do it with your arms. You, know? you just, <laughs> this is not really happening. Mm -hmm. You need to actually um, decelerate and stop it with your core and, and your lower back in particular. It can strengthen the lower back yeah. pretty well. So if you do a couple of swings like this. Whenever I took the sword out and I cut down like those trees in the backyard, like it actually kind of like hurt my shoulder. Like at the end of it, I was like, man, this is probably not what I should be feeling right now. And yeah. then switch side. It's hard, hard on this side. That's really hard. Anyway, you get the idea. Thanks for watching. Hope you had fun. Check out my other videos too. Take care, folks. Yeah. I totally agree with everything. He's, he's completely right about literally everything. Yeah, he's 100% right. This guy's made... I've seen like 50 of his videos. Or no, probably not that many. I've probably seen like 10 or so of his videos. But if it's something good like this, I've, I've seen it already. This guy's great. Scalagrim. Make sure to give him a sub. Give it a like. Yeah, I completely fucking agree with this. Yeah, nobody was actually using these swords. As professional swordsmen, hey, it is what it is, right? Well, if a single blow solves solves it all, right? If you hit it, of course. People not gonna, like, that's just not how it works usually. Like, because the majority of the, like, I would say probably, like, if you're in a battle, like, you don't need, you're not swinging one time. And also, like, a spear, yeah. Like, if you stab somebody with a spear... And the spear goes through them right here. They're not going to do anything after that. If you cut their neck somewhere, they're not going to keep moving because they're bleeding out. Like, you really don't need a lot to kill somebody. You don't need this massive fucking sword to cut them in half. It incapacitates them, they bleed out, and they die. That's it. You don't need to go all the way. Speed is better, yeah. But it's cool? It is cool. It's very cool. But definitely not necessary. That's my point. He mentioned just as fragile as they are resilient. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you can only be so resilient if somebody cuts, like, certain veins in your neck, you know? Like, it's just, just gonna die.